Hello everyone and welcome to this virtual back to school night. My name is Ms. Schnorr and I'm going to be your Child's World History 1 teacher this year. Uh, this is my sixth year working at West Springfield as a history teacher teaching world history. So I'm very excited to get going on another great school year and to be working with your child this year. So throughout this presentation, I'm just going to be going through some of the basics of the class, how the class works, and just some basic information about myself as well. All right, so again, my name is Ms. Schnorr, and I'm going to be your child's world history teacher. The best way to contact me throughout this year is via email. I check my email very frequently, and the email is on the screen there, veschnorr at fcps.edu. That is the one that I will be checking frequently and getting back to and responding um, frequently as well. So that is definitely the best way to contact me with any concerns that you may have. So just keep that in mind moving forward. Also, never hesitate to reach out if you do have a concern. Please let me know, and I'd be very, help, um, very happy to work with you with that concern. A little bit of background information on myself. I went to Indiana University. I also grew up in Indiana, so I grew up, for those of you who are familiar with the Indianapolis area, I grew up just north of Indianapolis in Noblesville. And I went to Indiana University, so go Hoosiers. as my alma mater there. I'm very, very proud. I love to travel. It's one of my favorite things to do. I've been to a lot of different countries um, and a lot of different places throughout the world, so that's been very exciting for me. One of the coolest experiences that I've had traveling is I actually got to live in Ireland for a little while. And while I was living in Ireland, I was teaching history at a um, high school there, a secondary school there. So that was a very neat experience for myself. I'm also a huge soccer fan and my team is Barcelona. So there we go. All right. So your child is taking World History 1 this year. And in World History 1, we're going to be covering material essentially from the beginning of history. Um, we're actually learning about prehistory right now. So if you ask your child what they're learning in history class, hopefully they can tell you prehistory. Um, and then we're going to work all the way up to about the year 1500 um, with the Renaissance in Europe. So we're going to be talking about a lot of different stuff, a lot of it different areas throughout the world. And it's going to be a very exciting year. So very much looking forward to it. All right, so your child is taking an honors level history course. And what that means is that the content for World History One is going to be the same content as all World History One students are taking. Again, starting from prehistory, kind of the beginning of human history through um, the European Renaissance. However, we are going to be going in more depth and a little bit more detail than what you might see in a regular level class. We also will be doing more writing, um, especially in regards to historical analysis and DBQs, which are document based questions. So we'll be working on those things this year as well. And with projects, we are going to be working a lot more on application of what we are learning in class and applying them to different situations via projects. So that's what you're talking look forward to. It's a lot of fun. Um, it is some hard work, but it really does pay off. And your children do learn a lot via this honor level history course. As far as how the class is organized, your best tool to kind of keep track of what's going on in history class is to access Schoology. Schoology is where I'm going to be putting all of the class materials that your child um, may need. And also, this is where you can keep track of your child's assignments is via Schoology. Each unit will have its own folder that has all the information that your child needs. All of the materials and readings and assignments will be there. Even if it is an assignment that your child is supposed to hand in a hard copy of, supposed to do by hand, I'm going to put a calendar notification on their Schoology page so that you can see it and that they can see it when they're looking at their calendar and looking to see what their assignments are and keep themselves organized. So any questions you may have, go to Schoology. Um, you access Schoology to see this video, so you do have access to that. And um, those different folders are going to have those different materials. Again, if you have any questions about anything on Schoology or where to find something on Schoology, just send me a quick email and I can point you in the right direction. 
Also, SIS is the gradebook of record. We are going to be using SIS, and you should be able to access this via the parent account. And you should be able to keep track of your students' grades um, via SIS there and be checking those out. I believe the school will also automatically send um, progress reports every two weeks with those SIS grades. All right, speaking of grading, in this class, we are divided into 90-10. So essentially 90% of your student's grade is going to be their assessments. And an assessment is anything which, in which I'm assessing knowledge. Um, so that, of course, includes tests and quizzes, but it also includes projects, papers, other writing assignments, basically anything in which your um, student is showing me that they know the material that they're supposed to know. Um, we'll go into that 90% assessment category. Everything else is going to go into a category called 10, um, that is 10% of the grade called practice. Um, and that's gonna be kind of those things that we do in class, a lot of the homework assignments, those things that help your student learn the material that they're supposed to learn, but are really just more practice there. All grades are gonna be based on contact knowledge and mastery of skills. Um, there's no kind of behavior-based grades or anything like that. Every assignment and every grade in the gradebook is going to be um, representative of knowledge that your student knows. Also in history, like all the social studies courses, we will be using a rolling gradebook. And essentially a rolling gradebook means that the, we will not have quarter grades and instead your student's grade is going to be 100% of their grade throughout the year. Um, this actually works out to make things a lot more balanced and really gives you a better idea of exactly um, what your student knows and where they're struggling in what areas. So rolling grade book, um, sometimes it takes a little bit to get used to because you're used to dividing up those quarters, but once you get used to it, it makes a lot of sense. And if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and I can explain it further. But rolling grade book just kind of gives you a better picture of what your student actually knows and kind of again is a hundred percent throughout the year rather than divided into four quarters all right so again thank you so much for viewing this video um big takeaways here i'm very excited to get this year going and to be working with your child this year and please do not hesitate to reach out again my name is miss schnorr and you can email me at veschnorr at fcps.edu. I'm looking forward to um, meeting you and working with you this year. Thank you.